What is up, everybody? Adam here with the trailer Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the Truxel fly rod carrier. So this is gonna be able to get two fully assembled fly rods into the carrier to be nice and protected. And it does accommodate four and a quarter inch diameter reels. The reel up design reduces stress on your rod and kind of guides and eliminates the eyelet snags that you get whenever you're putting it in there. Sometimes the eyelets just get snagged up, but with this, don't really have to worry about that at all. And it's ready to go. So we do have two independent tubes and we have a nice little divider here. So you're not gonna get any contact between your rods, but they're not gonna get tangled. That's the biggest thing with me, since we have two individual tubes that go through there. And especially with that really thin line that you gotta use, I hate when it gets tangled. So with this, it's not gonna get tangled. And that's always a plus. Obviously it locks, but whenever we do close this all away, it's gonna be nice and sealed tight. And every single other crack, there's not gonna be any water getting into your rods and damaging them. Even though mine gets relatively wet whenever I'm fishing, of course, you just wanna make sure when it's in here, it's gonna stay nice and safe. And this isn't going to fade away over time. It does have a nice construction. So it does have a coating, which isn't gonna per, it is gonna prevent it from fading away over time. And of course the rest of it's just made of aluminum. I thought that was a no brainer when I started looking into this thing. It's not gonna, it's not going to rust away over time and it will resist against that rust and whatever mother nature throws at you. So in the big boy mode, it is gonna be about 126 inches from that side all the way to the end there. So if you wanna still be able to open up your hatch, you're gonna to have to kind of shift it a little bit to the front to get it to fit. But when it condenses all the way down, it goes all the way down to about 44 inches. You can either just carry it like this just to put it in the back of your vehicle. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space at all. It'll fit in the back or the trunk of your vehicle really, really simply. But it can also go on the plane with you. So if you are going on a big fishing trip or something like that, this is a good way to getting it safely transported from A to B. But, but today, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna expand this and put it up on my roof. Sometimes the fish aren't really close to where you are. So we're actually going down in that tree line, this little spring creek, and uh, see if something's there. So here we go. Well, I'm at the spot. A bunch of my buddies are downstream a little bit, so I'm gonna grab my stuff and start a walking and hopefully catch some fish. Well, that was fun. We caught a couple of fish and that's what it's really all, all about. That's why I have this thing up on top of my roof, but it doesn't have to live up there. It actually can condense and I can actually carry that. So this rod carrier does do a really good job of giving you options. You know, we have a lot of different rooftop fly rod carriers on our website, but this one condenses down. So I really think that if you're really wanting to do A and B, it gets a little bit of annoying just because I'm gonna have to take my rods out, collapse my rods down. I'm gonna have to take this thing off my roof and then I'm gonna collapse it down and then I gotta put my rods back in it, put on the strap, take the clamps that were clamping down my roof, throw them somewhere and then go on my way. I really do think that it's gonna be on a trip to trip basics because I can take this on a plane when it's collapsed down. So if I'm not driving, I'll just put the, my rods in that bring it on the plane with me and go. But if I am just driving around, I'm just gonna keep it on my roof 
and then just grab my rods from there and then walk down to the spring. So I really do think it comes down to where you're going and I really just like the option of choosing. So if I'm going on a plane, I'm gonna use the collapsed version. If I'm just driving somewhere, I'm gonna keep it on my roof. Nothing else on the market really does that. So if you really wanna have that option, just to keep all of that open, just depending on where you're going, I definitely think this is gonna be a great option for you. So it is pretty quick to actually take it from the long big boy version down to the little collapsed version. So even if you were to pull up somewhere and you just wanted to collapse it down and go, and then you come back and then you just put this in your vehicle whenever you're done, I think that is very, very doable. It won't take you a whole lot of time, but this is definitely the bread and butter of this product. You don't really see this with any of the rod holders. They're all super bulky and even if it's not even trout fishing season and you're not really fly fishing much. This is so much easier to put in your garage. So whenever you're not using it, you can get it down, put it in your garage. You can hang it up, put it on a shelf. It's not that heavy. It's like 15 pounds, but this thing is definitely the ultimate rod carrier. I think because you get the best of both worlds and this is pretty sweet. So there's going to be a series of buttons. This thing did give me a little bit of trouble but if you stick with it, it'll work. So first thing you wanna do is go to this little thing right here. It says start ear. So we're gonna have this little knob. We're gonna have to pull this off just like that. I'm gonna push this down. And slide this out just like that. And we're gonna flip it over. Notice how it says stop, so you don't want to pull it out any farther than that. So then what we want to do is we're going to go to this button right here. I'm going to push that down. And then pull that out. And then we're going to go down to the button number four. And pull that out. So that's basically it. So we have our one section, two section, three section, and four sections. So now we want to flip it back over. And these are the channels that our feet can go in so we can put it on a roof. I have the crossbar spread specific to this basket, so I don't want to mess with that at all, which actually isn't a bad deal at all just because we have so many slots on the side of here but I do want to use my back hatch and that's not really going to work. So I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to use the very far back slot and this slot right here, just like that. I will be able to see it whenever I'm driving a little bit, but it's not going to be that bad. And I don't necessarily hate the idea of actually being able to see this thing. Clamps are pretty simple. We're just going to go in this little side right here, slide it all the way down. And we wanna kinda of get an idea of where we're gonna be. So basically with this, it's just gonna go around and then this is gonna fit into the slot, just like that. And then we're gonna use this cool little tool to tighten it up. So depending on what kind of crossbars you have, you might need a little longer bolt. So like with your Yakima HD bars, or if you are wrapping it around the Rhinorak HD bars as well, those will be a little bit thicker. So they do come with longer bolts or shorter bolts depending on what's going on. But with me, I'm just using these right here and they work out pretty good. So now that that's done, basically just put it on the other slot back there and we'll put them all down and tighten them all up at the same time. So I have factory crossbars on the roof of my Tahoe. So what we did was we shortened up this bolt, just used that one bolt that was a little shorter in there. And then one thing we are gonna have to do is we're gonna need to put this spacer in here just because even with the shorter bolt, it's not gonna work with your factory crossbars. You need to put this on there. So we're gonna have two of them. All we need to do is just peel back this little sticky right there. And then I ended up just putting it on the clamp so we're gonna line it up with the bar, put it on there, done deal. And with this situation, we have the shortest bolt on factory crossbars 
with the spacer. So it's extremely tight, but trust me, it's worth it because when we use the little tool to tighten everything down, here it is right here, it's kind of difficult to get up there. So it's worth the struggle. So now what I found easiest to do is we're gonna kinda, we're gonna lift this up and we're basically just gonna put this around, put this on, and then put the rest of the hardware together. So that's the way I'm doing it, just because it's extremely tight and I just don't wanna have to tighten down with this thing any more than I have to because it's so difficult to get underneath there and tighten it with this because it is a nylon lock nut too, so it's kind of difficult. So that's what I'm doing, and I suggest you do that too, if you plan on using this on your roof. All we need to do is twist this a couple different times, which is nice. And once we get it tightened down, make sure it's nice and solid, at least onto the bar. So now, we got our rods. We got our rods. So one of them kind of condenses down, so that's kind of nice, but the other one does not. So that's really what's gonna help us out here. Make sure it's nice and tight. And just put them on in there. Easiest part of all of it. Just like that. Perfect. And I am curious to see how it does with this rod, as this one's not really the same as all the others. But it actually does pretty good. If you notice how this one's just vertical and this one's actually just horizontal on the shaft. So that actually works out. So now that that's done, we can put it down in there and that's unlocked, but we can take our key and it is one of these circle keys. So it's gonna be super difficult for somebody to figure that out and pick it. So now that's done, we're locked and loaded. So if you saw me struggle with this little tool when tightening the hardware down, I highly suggest getting this little extra piece. One, it's gonna lock, which is nice. So you'll get keys with your kit and it'll lock, but it'll completely replace the need to use this tool. So you'll be able to just use your hands like this to tighten it down. I highly suggest doing that because that gave me the most trouble out of everything. And I don't wanna to have to take that much time to put it on or take it off. So if you do want to kind of do the hybrid roll, which is what the Truxel brings to the table, definitely get this right here. Lock it down and make it easier on yourself. If we aren't planning on putting this on our roof, maybe we're just using a truck and we're using a ladder rack. So this is a larger little clamp that you can use with your ladder racks and stuff. So this isn't coming with the kit, but if you do planning on putting it on something like that, on the bed of your truck, this is the clamp you're gonna wanna get. And that same exact lock that we talked about earlier is gonna fit and work with this clamp as well. So grab that, trust me, it'll help. All in all, the CRC Truxel fishing rod carrier does bring a lot to the table. To be honest, these buttons kind of drove me crazy at the very beginning, but then I figured it out. If you have a little bit more patience than me, which I have zero patience, you're gonna do fine with this. This really does bring a lot to the table. You have an option to put it on your roof or you can just carry it like this and it's gonna keep your rod safe. I think this is super cool and there's nothing else really out there on the market like it. So if you really want options, go with this.